YouTube, it's your boy Big Justin Flair. Welcome to the LaFleur Lounge with it. This is the top five at five, and I decided to do it like a podcast style, man. You know, we still gonna do the lives. Don't don't get it twisted. We still gonna do the lives. But I just thought that, you know, maybe I could go back to maybe like my little old way of doing things a little bit. High production. We gonna give you this probably twice a month on Sundays at five o'clock. Um, if I can do it more, I will, you know, but the live still got to pop off. Y'all know how silly I get on there, how crazy I get on there. And, you know, I'm still going to put out my daily content. So make sure if you aren't that you subscribe and y'all check out my daily videos. Also, man, today what we getting into, we talking Lil TJ being arrested twice in 10 days for two different gun charges. We also going to talk, is 21 really the artist of the year for 2022? Is he really the best rapper alive? Or did that Drake hype kind of give him that stimulus package? You know, we also got to talk about Boston Richie and 1090 Jake. What's going on there, man? Is Boston Richie a snitch? Is there a definition of snitching these days? Is there punishment for it? And you exposing snitches, is that a dangerous job, putting out paperwork? And then last but not least, we got DJ Academics versus Blueface. And we already see what's going on there, man. It's a war of words that's turning into somebody wanting to have them fisticuffs. So, without further ado, I appreciate y'all watching. Welcome to the Top 5 at 5. Who y'all going for today on this nice uh, Sunday of football, man? Y'all let me know down below in these comments. And we out, baby. Boom. That's my boy. Nah, y'all wildin'. What y'all doing this for? Oh. Nah, they wildin'. They wildin' for no reason. For no reason. Y'all wildin' for no reason, y'all. They wildin' for no reason, y'all. Nah, y'all wildin', bro. Rapper Lil TJ was arrested for the second time in two weeks. Let me tell you why he might as well not even bond out. He might as well just stay wherever he at. Get the sentence popping. Get it started already. But first, run my intro, please. Yo, Lil TJ. So you must be one of them niggas who like throwing stones at the penitentiary, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I had sympathy for you the first time. Because we know about six months ago, you got shot seven times in the chest, right? Seven times in the chest. You survived. A true 50 cent story. A true tragic story that had a nice ending to it because we like man this man kept his life he about to come home from the hospital his career is about to be through the roof right all you had to do was focus on just making your music and popping it off but i started knowing you was going in the wrong direction when the first song you put out at the hospital you dissing dead niggas like the i, I don't I, I forgot the dude's name but he was like the tuca of the bronx you dissing niggas like I can't go out like them and this, that, and the third as if you chose to live. Like it's not in the higher power's hands or it's not like a chance at luck, right? Like it's not the first responders uh, that helped you out to get to the hospital. Like it's not uh, the area you were in, you know, the speedy response. Like all that factored into saving your life, but you acted as if like I'm too gangster to die, right? That was your first mistake with me. Second, 
You got arrested going to a Ice Spice video shoot. And I get it. You going back to the Bronx. You feel like you need some protection. You probably paranoid. You didn't been shot. But why can't you just do things the right way? It's a lot of options you could have did now. Got you some security just for the video shoot. I know security can get expensive, but there's no cost on sparing your life. You could have got you some security, rocked out, you want to do the homie security again. Now, what happened the last time you had homie security? Yeah, they shot the nigga that shot you, but you got shot seven times in your chest. Homie security ain't nothing and you be lacking too. Because you was sitting in the car when you got shot, just sitting and chilling in the car. You were sitting and chilling at the car on the way to the Ice Spice concert, I mean, uh, video shoot. And they saying that the police came, got you. Now you didn't have problems with the hip hop police before. I didn't see videos of them pulling you over. So it's not like you are not aware, like you ain't never had issues with the police. So I'm sitting here wondering like, what's going on? Why you move so sloppy? So you would think, yo, I just got arrested in New York City for a gun charge. This is about to cost me a lot of money just for my lawyer. Basically, they knocked me down to 10 months in prison because, oh, you gonna do some time behind it. We know how strict New York is with them gun law. So what's better than one gun charge? Two gun charges, nigga. You take your dumb ass, you go get another gun. You go get another gun. Now, I don't know if they're going to turn that into a federal charge, but boy, you better be sweating bullets right now. Yeah, you might as well just stay in the jail. If we being honest, that's my personal opinion. You might as well just stay in the jail. Get that time served over with, my boy. Because they might hit you with a maximum because obviously you somebody who don't care about the rules. And I get it, you paranoid. I felt sorry for you that first time. But now, it's like, bro... How many times do you got to keep making the same mistake over and over again, bro? Go get you some security. Matter of fact, stay out of New York City. Stay out of New York City. It's time for you to leave, bro. You know what the old, we you know what the old New York rappers do when they realize, bro, New York ain't the place to be as a rapper. They go to Miami. I swear to God, man, ask Fat Joe. Ask Nori. Ask French Montana. Ask P. Diddy. All them move to Florida, bro. Everybody move to Florida, bro, when they catch these cases. And they just realize, man, this shit ain't it over here in New York. We understand what New York is. It ain't no knock on New York. But when it's time for you to go, it's time for you to go. Now you got to fight two cases. Now you might have to spend a million dollars just to, just to get your case down. You might do five to ten. Don't let the feds pick it up. You done got your second charge. I know now they didn't pulled you over in that interrogation room. Yo, yo, who, 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 who you getting these guns from? They trying to make sure these guns ain't crossing state lines. That's another charge. New York ain't nothing but a trap, my brother. You 21, 20 years old. Man, you could have came to Atlanta like the rest of these rappers, man. Concealed. You don't even need no permit no more. Put that thing right there in your waist. If that's how you feel, you could have put that thing right there in your waist. They could see it. They wouldn't even say nothing to you. They can't say nothing to you. They got to have probable cause to question you about that gun. So what I'm saying is, bro, you had too many options to keep doing the same thing over and over again, failing the same way. It is what it is, though, with you, little TJ. You know, a hard head make a soft ass. And I hope you ain't got the soft ass in somebody prison. That's just what it is now. So y'all let me know what y'all think about Lil TJ, man. Do y'all think Lil TJ is a fool? Do y'all think it's one of those situations like, hey man, I've been shot, can't leave without it. Do you think that he could have avoided these situations? Y'all let me know, man. All right, now, now if you ask me, the NBA and the rap game are pretty much very comparable at this point. Now, y'all ask me, what do I mean by this? Kendra Lamar reminds me of Kawhi Leonard, right? Silent type, don't show up to work much. But when they do come to work, it's very impactful. Best in the game. One of the best in the game, right? Then we have J. Cole. Silent killer. 
consistent, shows up every year, no excuses, champion, right? J. Cole, Tim Duncan, one in the same. Some people will say that game is boring. You know what I mean? It's an acquired taste, old school, pack a lunchbox, come to work. That's their type of style. Then last, we got Drake being LeBron, right? How did they do this this long? Probably the longest runs we didn't seen in the game, right? Always at the top of the game. But the thing is, they so good that people start ignoring some of the greatness that they do. At this point, Drake and LeBron, they're so good, and they probably should have won six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 MVPs by now. To the point where people are just giving other people MVPs just because LeBron and Drake are so good. What does that mean? Complex gave 21 Savage the best rapper of the year, the best rapper alive award. And nobody agrees with they ass. Now, 21 Savage, according to Complex, is the best rapper in the world for the year 2022. Now, one thing why this is bothering me is because I've always been a huge fan of this article that Complex does every year. They literally go back to 1979 and every year they say who the best was. So, and usually to me, I agree with it every year. So we go like the 93 when Doggy Style dropped and they got Snoop Doggy Dog as the best rapper of the year. Tupac 96, Biggie 95. Then they turn around 2008, we got Lil Wayne. That's my senior year, right after my senior year of high school. Um, who else we got? Drake in 2015 on the beef with Meat. Drops his album, drops the album with Future. Usually they get this right. And maybe this is because 2022 was a very down year in hip hop, in my personal opinion. A lot of albums came and went, but I think that that's just what today's game is in the industry with music, right? So they gave it to 21 Savage. The problem I have with this, right, is because 21 Savage didn't even drop a solo album in 2022. 21 Savage dropped the album with Drake in November. In November, 21 Savage dropped a joint album. That was the first project he gave us the whole year. On top of that, in July, he had Jimmy Cook's great song. It's Drake's song. It's not 21's song. And I'm also thinking that maybe it was a little overrated. Don't get me wrong. It's a banger. It's a hit. It deserves whatever success it get. But the reason I say maybe it's overrated is because Drake dropped a, a dance album and only put one hip hop track on there. And that was Jimmy Cook's. Anyway, I'm not really agreeing with the 21 Savage take, but let's read a little segment under the complex article. It says, on paper, nothing about this partnership makes sense. Drake is an overcalculating lover boy and Savage is a stone cold slaughter gang CEO. Yet somehow, thanks to Drake's tactfulness and 21's penchant for cold-blooded rhymes, the album solidified their electric dynamic and proved that the Savage Mode rapper could hold his own with one of the biggest artists in the world. Some may argue that 21 took a back seat on the project, but in reality, he balanced every track thanks to his slippery wordplay and sinister delivery. Now, I have a problem with that, but we're going to get there. I don't think too hard when I'm making music. It just comes naturally, he says. Drake makes you comfortable with the melodic hook just so Savage can deliver the killing blow with his bars. For every pop-centric jumbotron shit popping led by Drake, 
There's a menace in Broke Boys or More M's anchored by Savage. Now, the reason I have a problem with what they're talking about is because they're saying it like on every song, 21 comes and compliments Drake. When in actuality, 21 Savage ain't on half of the fucking album. Now, don't get me wrong. I champion the album. I love the idea. I love the execution of the album. But we have to keep it real. They're saying that this is the album that solidified 21 Savage as rapper of the year. When in actuality, about four tracks, he's not even on them. On top of that, probably two to three of the songs, 21 doesn't really play a particular heavy role on the actual track. He's barely on some of the tracks. Like Hours in Silence, like he just gives you a hook. He just gives you like a bridge. He's barely on some of these tracks. And I never heard anybody say, damn, 21 outshine Drake on this album. This is why I say this is the LeBron effect. Because Complex has got to know that this is like a Drake album featuring 21 Savage on multiple tracks. The only song I think Drake's not on that 21 Savage is on is the Glenwood track. Don't get me wrong. I love 21. I'm an Atlanta native. Hell, 21 and lived on and off. But we got to keep it real now. Like, we have to be reasonable. And this is the first time I feel like maybe Complex is, is basically trying to troll for us to read the article. Unless somebody there, maybe it was a tough task. I don't know. I mean, other other songs that he's had, he had, uh, he had a song with Pharrell. He had a song with J.I.D., with Jid. But... To me, they weren't that impactful. Like it wasn't that was it that impactful? Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. 21 was all over the Metro Boomin album, Heroes and Villains, but so was Future. Future, one of the highest selling artists of the year. By himself, solo album. I don't think that if we look at this article and we go all the way back to 1979, who is getting like the best artist without dropping? a actual solo album that's why i'm like yo if if we're counting the shit that he did with drake then why isn't drake just number one they had drake as an honorable mention but drake literally carried 21 savage to being the best rapper i think that's fair to say it just doesn't the logic doesn't make sense the article what they're saying doesn't make sense they literally said yo some are saying he took a backseat to Drake. Of course, Drake has the stimulus package. He's not a better MC than Drake. So I'm confused as to like what we getting. Drake was the one that was trending for dissing uh, every Serena's husband, for dissing uh, Kanye. He was dissing everybody. The man dissed Serena's husband. And y'all are saying that 21 was standing out on the album? Since when? So it's getting a little confusing for me in this situation. Um, I would put Future, Kendrick Lamar. Now, I think that the reason, you know, narratives are everything. The reason Kendrick Lamar, because to me, Kendrick is probably the clear cut winner of this situation. If we were being reasonable, just because his album was, you know, the sales got to count. Um, the music got to count. I love the album. The anticipation. But I think it's just because of the fact Kendrick sold, what, 350 or 380 or something like that. People are used to him selling more. Music comes and goes. Some people say they didn't like it. Some do. Okay, we can leave Kendrick alone then. Future? I don't understand the argument on that. Everybody fuck with Future shit. I think even Lil Durk got some say to go. I thought Lil Durk with that 7220. I thought that he dropped a great album, solid. He had hits. Oh my God, what happened to Virgin? Yeah, he had that. Like, come on, man. I thought that they had enough hype, more hype, and they dropped earlier in the year. Since when do you put out your album in November? And then by December, we're naming you the best rapper alive? Damn. That's cold work, Complex. But you know what? 
it did what it was supposed to do. And sometimes you got to leave us in an argument. It's barbershop talk, baby. So I want to do first salute complex. I do understand. I like what y'all did with that one. This was a down year. So why not leave it up for debate? Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Do y'all think that 21 Savage is the top rapper in the game of 2022? Or do y'all think it was cap? So far, I'm seeing a lot of cap online. And who do y'all put in the head start for 2023? That's the real question. Let me down. Let me know down low in the comments, man. Hey, man, y'all ever been in high school, middle school, chilling outside with your partners, chilling with the gang, and y'all got the roasting? Y'all got the joning on each other? And you start getting the best of a nigga, right? You getting on them, oh, look at your shoes. Oh, look at that fucked up haircut. Oh, your mama this, right? You going in. They laughing. Everybody laughing at you. And then... You get on the one dude who be like, but you can't see these hands though. Yeah, a nigga, it's always a nigga who want to fight because he, he ain't as witty. He don't got the jokes. He's not as entertaining as you. Now y'all agreed to start this out as a roast battle. All of a sudden you want to fight me. That's exactly what Blueface is doing to academics. Now, a lot of people are saying, yo, academics, man, you pussy. You pussy, man. You don't want to fight Blueface. Now, I'm going to have to disagree. We all know academics and Blueface been going at it, right? Now, this all started, I do the same thing. I do commentary. Academics did his commentary on why he's disappointed in Blueface. He's saying, I want Blueface to go back to rapping. Instead, he's online getting beat up by his girl, hitting the head with bottles. She's vacuuming glass out his head. She's slapping him around. He's walking around with black eyes. This is all true. He's saying, I want you to get back to rapping. Then he come turns around, blue face, and says, hey, yo, academics, you know I got more money than you. Now, where did he get this from? That's from what Lil Baby said about academics. He says the same thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that academics probably got a little bit more money than Blueface. But see, this is turning into a dick pulling contest. That's neither here nor there. So then they engage in words online. They going back and forth. They saying things. Academics does this for a living. He talks 24-7 for a living. So yes... He's going to win this battle. So in the war on words, academics is just, he's, he's, he's going in on him. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Like he's putting out that, yo, you got, you got a house that's in pre foreclosure. Um, you getting put in concussion protocol by your girlfriend. I'm assuming that Blueface is running out of things to say. So he says, oh, you don't want to see these hands though. Let's fight. How about that? Let's just fight. Now, academics, we gonna be honest. Academics, he kind of, he's kind of deflecting. He's saying stuff like, how about those 10 niggas that you claim entertained your girl that you saying you're not the father because you don't know who may have gotten her pregnant? Yeah, you said 10 niggas. He said, how about you go throw hands with them? He said, you put that out there, Blueface, so you can't be mad at nobody but yourself. He's saying, how about you fight your girl? Because she's whooping your ass. So he's continuing the war on words. He's not really trying to fight. Come on now. Now, in all honesty, in Blueface, we already think that Blueface can beat up academics, right? But he doesn't gain any points from fighting academics. Academics could just show up for the fight and he already gains the points. He already wins. Now, in all honesty, as far as the whole situation with Lil Baby and the, he's saying like, he's saying like, yo, you said you wanted to fight Lil Baby. Why you won't fight me? I actually got time. 
actually, Lil Baby came in academics DM saying, hey, I'm in New York, let's fight. So it's a little different. Like, he wanted to fight him, right? It's not like academics is going out searching to fight, but he ain't turning down no fade. Now, he's saying, look, fine. If you want to fight me, blue face, let's get in the ring. Give me six months of training and let's actually make some money off of it. But the money that you're looking for ain't the type of money that I'm willing to settle for. It got to be some millions. He's saying, look, I'm a million dollar nigga. I'm this dad in the third. I get it. He's saying, basically, you know, I'm the prize. You not. Essentially, we know it's never going to happen. Rappers don't be fighting each other. They don't fight. We know what we know what it is. Me, my opinion on this, man, I think as long as they keep it a war on words, entertainment, entertainment, then they good. I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest with you, if all of this is planned out. This is what we call doing business now. This is basically Clubhouse on Twitter. People are staging fights, planning fights. You never know what's going on in this industry, in this entertainment world nowadays. So I feel like as long as they keep it war words, they'd be all right. I don't think this is a situation where they need to be fighting each other, to be honest. For what? What they fighting for? They winning. People like me say, yo, we got to stop giving Blueface and Krishan the entertainment and they'll go away. But really, it's our guilty pleasure to watch this toxicity and train wreck of a relationship. That's why they keep doing it. Academics. This is how he makes his money, being controversial. Him just doing commentary is not what got him where he is. Him being entertaining got him where he is. So you got to mix it in together. The same way Krishan, that's free promo. Krishan and Blueface, what they doing is free promo, arguing with academics. So all I say is keep it a war on words, but Blueface, if this is like some real beef, just get some better jokes, my nigga. That's how I look at it. Get some better jokes, man. <laughs> y'all let me know. Y'all ever had to deal with a nigga like that? Y'all roasting them, then all of a sudden they want to fight you? Do y'all look at academics as pussy? A nigga who live in his mama basement ain't never coming out. Do y'all look at blue faces really a lame for out here getting beat up by his girl like that? Y'all let me know what y'all think down below, man. What about you? Tell me about him. Tell me about your relationship. That's that's the dude they say. That's the dude from D Block. They like. What do you know? Who his name is. We. We. Yeah, man. All right. Hey, who's your life? Bro, like you know, from the from this side of town, he put like no blood, but he was like he was holding on to a pen, like they like. Bro, you know how them niggas just that little joke like that, like bro. The dude they say did it. I seen slow with him. They were smoking ills together or whatever. The dude they said it was it was a dude named Jarrell. The reason we know they hang because Eddie Eddie gave him his mama gave him and all uh, his all uh, the nigga Jarrell gave him a so I know for a fact they hang. All right, I think he, I don't know if he got a tattoo on him, baby. I know he got some tattoos on his arm though. Okay. Y'all can't bring no picture. Yeah, I'll work on it. Give me a minute. Yeah, you gotta work on it. That's him. Man. So we were taught by the old law that snitches get stitches and uh, that they end up in ditches and, you know, keep your mouth closed and, you know, it's not really stand up to snitch. And I'm beginning to learn that all that shit was a lie, man. All of it. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. All of that's a lie. Now, why do I say this, man? Now we've been seeing it's a it's a trend now. It's a pattern of rappers who are being exposed year, 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 year after year. They're getting exposed that they were snitches. Straight up. Now let's get to Boston Richie. We all know the story. I'm not gonna keep going back about the story. We know 1090 Jake and Boston Richie have had a war of words. As of this week, the recent update about this is. Boston Richie told, allegedly, 
He told 1090 Jake when the paperwork came out, hey, check my paperwork, look into it. 1090 Jake exposes the paperwork and says, wait a minute, you are, you didn't tell on one on one thing, you told on two. Boston Richie's team puts out an interrogation for the murder case. He seemed like he was actually being solid. Makes 1090 Jake look like, hey, man, what's going on? 1090 Jake saying, that's not the actual case that I put out there. That's what the other dude put out there. But this Grand Theft Auto case? Hold on, I got some interrogation footage of my own. He put out a 53-minute interrogation where he's saying names. He's telling. He's doing all of this. Now, one thing I ain't like that Boston Richie been doing, Boston Richie, every time 1090 Jake puts out more paperwork or more proof, Boston Richie adds to the story. He's saying, oh, no, nah, the names that y'all hearing, I was just spinning the police. You know what I'm saying? I was just sending them on a wild goose hunt. I was making up names. I was lying. I was doing all this, that, and the third. Now, nah, maybe he could have been doing that. You know, it's possible. But I felt like you would have said that from the beginning. Now they're saying, oh, the police is just making up paperwork. They making up lies. They doing all this. Well, 1090 Jake brings up the good point. Well, if they lying on you, why they didn't lie on the rest of the co-defendants? So they just only lying on you? Is that what all this paperwork is saying? They're only lying on you. You weren't Boston Richie then. You was just Jalen Foster. You wasn't a popular rapper. So it's not like you being targeted. It was no, this is what they saying on you. Fair point. So it comes down to where they get on DJ Academics podcast. They're debating. It's 1090 Jake, Jalen Foster, aka Boston Richie. Mostly Boston Richie's brother did more of the talking. But they're on there debating about if he snitched. And what I learned quickly is that they looked at it two different ways, right? Now I'm gonna be unbiased and I'm gonna explain both of their ways and then I'm gonna let y'all know how I feel about it. And then I would like for y'all to let me know how y'all feel in the comments below, right? So Boston Richie's team is essentially saying, hey, I never sent anybody to prison. I never sent nobody to jail. Anything that I said on there, it never incriminated nobody. Nobody did time, so I'm good. I'm not a rat. In my hood, nobody in my hood is mad about this. This is just some internet shit where it's a, a, a war on words. He even tweeted at one point, which I thought was crazy. If I snitched, then why I'm not dead? That's what he said. <laughs> now to me, I feel like, I mean, nobody that snitches really gets killed anymore. So that's a whole nother story. Now, we got 1090 Jake. His position is, it's real black and white. He's saying, look, don't nobody need to be cooperating with the police, period. You don't need to be in that interrogation room saying shit. You ain't supposed to say nobody's name because once you start saying names and trying to explain it, you're snitching. You're cooperating. You know what I'm saying? You're cooperating with the police. That's just what it is. Now, me personally, I agree with 1090 Jake. That's supposed to be the word, the letter of the law. That's how it used to be. But it's a little different these days. I actually tell people this, man. You won't need to be concerned with you and your homies like the way that y'all agree to what snitching is. If y'all are doing crime, that's the life y'all live. Your team, if this is what y'all agree snitching is, right? These are the rules that we are going to make and we cannot break them. If y'all agree to those rules, then that's all you need to be worrying about if they're snitching or not. That's how I look at it. It's whatever you and your team say it is. At the end of the day, it's just getting a little silly because we got grown men arguing for hours and hours online about who's a snitch, who's not. I understand. I'm going to say this. My advice to Boston Richie would be Boston. You keep on addressing it. You keep on saying things. It's kind of looking like you snitch. I mean, because even when you was in the interrogation room, you was talking too much. And when it comes to this situation, you're still talking too much. You got some loose lips, my boy. You know what I'm saying? You do got some loose lips. I'm going to say that. Pause. Now, I would say, bro, just be quiet. 
in all honesty, just be quiet, Boston Rich. It'll go away. Every time something hit the internet, you should really just wait a few days, wait a couple weeks to address it because the story just gonna go away before you even, before it even grow legs. What you did was make the situation worse and it kept growing legs. Travis Scott had nine people pass away at his show. Condolences to those people. Condolences to the family. I, did, I don't mean disrespect by saying this, but what I'm saying is people were saying that it's his fault. They villainized him. They said his rap career was over and all he did was just be quiet and people forgot about it. You can survive this if you be quiet and just put out great music. That's all you got to do. And 1090 Jake, I'm sure you know this, but I'm going to say this for my, my subscribers, for my listeners. Um, 1090, you got to be you got to be uh, moving right out here, man, because you're playing a dangerous game. You're playing a very dangerous game, man. These people, uh, there's people out here that want to hurt you because you exposing paperwork when these people are about to sign million dollars worth of deals and they come from nothing. You think that they won't hurt you from that? So I hope you out here moving right, man, because um, if this is the direction you're going to go with your content, it's going to be a lot of people mad at you, man. And just because these people are rats, don't mean they not dangerous. You know what I mean? It's all about the position you being put in. I think a lot of people, I think most people, 95% of people will tell the truth to the cops. It just depends on what the situation is. Some things people built for, some things people not. So y'all let me know down below what y'all think about the situation. Should I even be speaking on snitching? I'm a civilian. Should I just leave that up to them people? Should these people just, should people like Boston Richie just be quiet? Should 1090 Jake even be covering another man's paperwork? Y'all let me know everything that y'all think down below in these comments. Like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. And we out, baby. Boom! I'm Daddy Channel. <laughs> I'm Daddy Channel.